Cornell University is celebrating the Liberty Hyde Bailey Centennial, day-long program honoring the 100th year of Bailey's birth. 327 people from all over the country and abroad, from horticultural and botanical organizations, garden clubs, and family members attend. One being Professor Curtis C. Page, who married Bailey's granddaughter, Anne. In his address at Statler Hall that day, Page expressed concern about praising Bailey. He said, I concern less than speaking of him as a great man. We consider the practical greatness only, and forget the man, the isolate human being. Liberty Hyde Bailey was not a scientific or editorial or administrative machine. He was a man. He could be for us nothing if he is only a name to conjure with, a book to consult, an image to praise. He will be nothing, I think, if he is not seen as a human being who sweated and doubted, who regretted and failed, who must have been as lonely as we all are. My quest to find Liberty Hyde Bailey has come to an end. Through the help of the Lakeview Cemetery caretakers in Ithaca, my friend John Lindstrom and I will have access to the locked mausoleum where Liberty Hyde Bailey is laid to rest. Regarding his own mortality, Bailey could be practical carrying this ID card during his jungle explorations, instructing upon the chance of an untimely death to bury him where he lay. I'm in a quandary. Instead of celebrating Bailey's fully lived life, I can only recognize its termination. Christian author Anthony Bloom wrote, It is an error to think that man's connection with life on earth ends with his death. In the course of one's life, one sows seeds. These seeds develop in the souls of other men and affect their destiny. And the fruit that is born of these seeds truly belongs not only to those who bear it, but also to those who sow. This idea of continuance isn't lost on me. It's been affirmed throughout my search of Bailey, but now, facing his burial site, the idea loses its luster. I am reminded of a poem Bailey wrote. A few quick years, some sense of range and jive, some retrospect, some look ahead. Is it the normal state to be alive, or is it normal to be dead? Doing well. Thanks for coming out. Oh, my pleasure. Martin Kelly. Martin John Stempion. Hello. Hello. I was just spying a deer down mm -hmm. by the graves. Oh. This one's just <laughs> doing its thing. Hey, he's over here on the right. What I find inside the mausoleum is disheartening. Signs of neglect and disrepair are everywhere. But along the mausoleum's west wall, I find Liberty Hyde Bailey alongside his wife and daughters. John and I conclude our visit reading from Bailey's book of poetry, Wind and Weather. This is where my search comes to its conclusion because this day I return home.
As the seasons in Michigan shift, not only did I arrive at a better understanding of Liberty Hyde Bailey, but was also forced to grapple with this mystery of birth and life, which can only come out of death. Since this is true for the plant world, how could this not be the same with us? Putting the religious orthodoxy aside, what lies beyond our physical death? If anything, Bailey had an answer and reassures me to this day. Faith and trust. Two workmen true as I pass by announce what things beyond us lie. Two views that can never agree, yet each one knew just what will be. Present days they were not sure, but each man's future was secure. For faith had set them both to know precisely how our distance flow. But only this and this I know, that I am here, and then I go. I pass my work with hope and zest and live my time as it seems best. I live it full and drain it deep. Tis well to live, tis vain to weep. If there be things I cannot tell, the more I trust that all is well. I take the cheer from daily lot, and for the rest, I vex me not. For what there is beyond the sod, I leave it all to time and God. Hyde Bailey died at his home in Ithaca on December 25th. The day is celebrating faith, trust, and birth. He was 96 years old. Sure.